Welcome to the Engine Markets training session. Uh, so today's session, uh, we will talk about rolling analysis. Meanwhile, others are joining in. We will uh, actually start discussing our topic for today. So the topic for today, what we have is the rolling returns and the rolling volatility analysis on the mutual fund comparison and then the overall client portfolio. And then we will head over to the Q&A where we will try to address your queries. And if you have any questions, you can write it on the chat box or verbally and we will address them. So here, uh, let's go ahead and open up our engine markets terminal so that we can uh, take the session forward. So as you can see, this is the terminal what we have. And uh, uh, when we start with the you know, entire terminal, you can see the markets tab. So now how do we run rolling analysis on multiple sets of mutual funds? To run that, all you need to do is go, go and head towards the compare section. You can run rolling analysis for you know, different sets of categories or even a single category. So in the compare section, we have the section called compare securities. So here I can add a singular category just like mid caps and it easily gets added into the system. So while it is adding, what you can do is you can also sort in some data sets, remove some funds in the category and even add in the indices. So let's say we have added all the mid cap funds into this list. I can even add an index like Nifty mid cap 100 and it gets added into the system. So as you can see now, the index is also added into the system in the main list. Now, what we can do is we can run rolling analysis on particular set of all these funds, or either we can reduce the funds based on our criteria. To, to reduce these kind of funds, what you can do is you can just sort in based on the age, let's say for an example, and you can remove a couple of funds from this particular list. So let's say I'm removing a couple of funds with the age at least you know six to seven years old, and then I can then start uh, analyzing them based on the rolling analysis. So when I go ahead and do the analysis of the rolling analysis, what I need to do is just head over to the rolling tab here given in the compare section. So once I click on it, it runs the rolling analysis on the funds which we have selected in the list and also the index. As you can see, we can add multiple sets of indices in the list and then we can compare the funds within each other uh, uh, with one category or multiple categories as well. So here in the rolling analysis, there are a couple of uh, things which we need to be aware about. The number one thing is the 260 days. Now this is a rolling window which is considered as one working period in a year. So uh, it's a one year consideration and you can actually change this window for a two year, three year or any particular set of a window as rolling returns are calculated daily in the engine markets terminal. So here we also have the start date. So the start date actually denotes the minimum common period. The youngest funds uh, age is considered as a start date and then you can run the rolling analysis. Now here you can go beyond the youngest funds age. Let's say we go 2008 but some of the youngest funds will not be uh, visible in the rolling analysis when you run the uh, statistic, uh, statistical analysis here in the system. So that's how you can actually change the start date and the end date. And you can see some of the funds, like these three funds are actually the younger funds uh, and you can actually have the start date accordingly. So we are just considering the start date again. So, you know, you can just run the rolling analysis and uh, do certain sets of uh, uh, rolling return analysis and the statistical analysis here in the system. Here we also have the methodology. So methodology here, what you can do is you can analyze or absolute the data, the data sets. Currently it is analyzed. So you can analyze any data sets considering whatever window you have chosen. And the statistic here, which is given where you can change four sets of statistics. Two are from the return panel and the other two are from the risk, which is the volatility. So we will talk about all these uh, data sets and then we will run and when, then we will see what are the significance of these data sets and how we can use this to come up with an effective decision making, right? So here, let's say, let's go back to the data sets like 2014 date set, which was a minimum common period. And then we can run the anal analysis altogether. So when you see the statistic point to point, uh, and when you run the uh, uh, rolling return analysis, you can see the average volatility, high, low range, and the positive percentage. So all these uh, you know, data sets, what you see here has some significance. So first point, we will talk about the average. So what is this average? 
the average what you see is the average of all the rolling periods all the data points which you see here and the averaged here for the 260 data points so let's say for an example we take one single data point so here when you see 24 december 2018 the return set was 2.19 so this 2.19 denotes the previous 260 days return so every data set which you see are the previous 260 day return which is a one year return and when you average these all data sets you will get a rolling return average which is on the based on point to point statistic now what is point to point it calculates the first date of the 260 and the last date of the 260 and runs it till the current date scenario so you can see it's still the current date and then when you see the average you can actually understand which funds have actually back tested the highest average rolling return based on the point to point statistic right and here the volatility denotes the rolling returns volatility of these funds it is not a standard deviation of the simple uh, uh, one point to point return it is the rolling return volatility uh, and what it does is it shows how volatile are the funds based on the rolling returns so here you can effectively see pgm india mid cap opportunity is one of the most volatile fund in this particular set of a list compared with the nifty mid cap 100 which is given here right so you can even add the index as i've shown you before and multiple indices and compare the funds and see which are more volatile fund based on the ruling analysis and which are the lesser ones so lesser ones you can see here access mid cap is one of the lesser one right and here you can also go ahead and check out certain other parameters now what is this high and low so high and low denotes the highest backtested return sets on a point to point basis so here when you see this data sets here one of the highest backtested return set for pgm india was 137.02 for 260 days right and then we have the lowest one as well so lowest backtested is by negative 27.02 percent so now you can actually toggle in and you can actually recognize which of the fund or even an index had the lowest return set for a one year period which is 260 right and then we have the range and the positive percentage before going to the range and positive percentage i will talk about the statistic here so statistic can be changed for the return sets right so point to point which i st uh, stated before is the uh, what we do is we only take into consideration the first date of the 260 and the last date of the 260 and then run it on the rolling basis right what simple returns does is it removes the compounding effect and it sums the all the daily returns of the 260 period so basically when you when you see the data sets here right any data point which you actually run in here just a second so you will see uh, the sum of the daily returns which is being calculated so let me just run this again yeah. so one thing here is that uh, just a second yeah so you can just add in the mid cap funds i'm so i'm adding the list from here so we have a functionality where you can add in any particular set of a list so here i'm adding one composition which was already saved into the system so if it is uh, you know if you uh, get back or refresh your browser you can use this uh, you know my list as a saved list as well so when i run the rolling analysis again you can easily see uh, all the data sets being added into the system and then i can run the statistic which is simple return sets now for the simple return sets, uh, what I was talking about before that we are considering a rolling window of 260, which is a one year period, right? And any data point which I hover upon, right? Now it denotes that this 18.06% for access mid cap is the sum of the previous 260 days daily returns. Now what it does is it removes the compounding effect from the point to point and it helps us to actually compare them on a comparable basis. So when, when you see, when you see the average here, you will see the fund which is having the lowest average rolling return based on the simple return statistic is Aditya Birla SL mid cap. And compared to that, you can see Kotak equity opportunities. So you can effectively uh, see the average, the volatility similar to the previous one, which I showed you before, the highs and the lows and the range. Now, what is this range? The range is the absolute difference between the highest backtested return for a 260 days rolling window and the lowest backtested return for a 260 days rolling window. So that is 101.29. Now what it denotes, it denotes that which of the fund are actually having a very high range when you're considering the high and the low. 
So you can effectively see that I approve mid cap fund is actually a, having a very high range and the lowest point is negative 41.97%. And that itself is a biggest risk. So whenever you're considering a selection of fund between mid caps or any particular capitalization like large caps, flexi cap, you can actually check what is the highest point and the lowest point in the system. And here also we have one more important thing, which is a positive percentage. Now, positive percentage is very useful to understand that what are the these all periods, how much percentage of the frequency of these periods are there in positive. So for an example, let's say we are considering IPRO mid-cap fund. 74% of the time, it was more than 0% return. You can actually simulate this in our rolling return distribution. All you need to do is just type in 0% here, right? And you just type in the maxima here, which will den denote the maximum range we can achieve, right? And once you type in, you will see that the positive percentage of I prove mid cap fund is 74.25. It just means that the frequency of all these data points, which are daily calculated, in positive, right? And it helps us to determine what are the funds which have highest uh, positive percentage, highest frequency of coming into more than 0%. So at least you can understand the risk which has happened from the last seven to six years. Now this data points, you can actually take a look towards on the basis of any funds you add. Like for an example, if I change it to the rolling window of 580, so you will see the positive percentage will also change. So 520 is effectively a two year period. Right. And when you run this on the basis of simple return statistic, you will see all the data points being changed. And the methodology which you see is a useful here because now you can toggle around with the absolute and analyze. Now, if you do absolute, you will see the absolute 520 days, some of the daily returns as an average here. Right. Which is given here. These are all the absolute data points. Now, if you want to know the annualized data point of this, which you can do here in the system, you can do that here itself. Now you can run this analysis and you can see all the data points which I've narrated before. And you can definitely see that now the uh, positive percentage of some of the funds have actually increased. So what it denotes, it helps us to understand that if you hold for a longer period, the positive percentage increases. So the periods which are in positive are more now. So you can also simulate that in a rolling return distribution to understand what are the positive percentage. Similarly for the negative percentage as well. When you type this as zero and you type it as a maxima here, you can understand the negative percentage of any fund here in the system, right? So this gives us a uh, very much of a flexibility to compare any fund based on the rolling return analysis. And you can also see the data sets here, which is given uh, on a rolling return distribution. Now rolling return distribution is also very useful. What it does is it helps us to understand what should we expect from such funds which we have selected into the system, right? So for an example, we have this distribution uh, uh, table given here and these all percentages which you see are the ranges of the percentage uh, of the return sets. Now you can actually select your own range. What engine does is it gives you a preset range uh, which you want to, uh, which, which uh, applies from the minima and the maxima of the list. But you can apply up a, a range like for an example, let's say 15% to 20%, right? So how many of the funds are backtesting highly between these two data points? Now we have actually done this uh, annualized, uh, the methodology here. So what you can see here is a couple of funds like SDFC Midcap Opportunities, uh, Franklin India Prima, and even Invesco India Midcap. They are highly backtesting between 15% to 20% annualized return sets for a 2, 520 rolling window. Now you can do that for different sets of period as well. And this is applicable for an individual fund analytics and also applicable for a portfolio analytics. So we have a rolling analysis, which helps you to uh, understand on the basis of a portfolio where you can see similar distribution analysis for a particular set of a rolling window. So here, when you see this 30 to 40% here, you can see the frequency between the intervals of 30% to 40%. And what are the highest frequency? You can definitely see it's from Kotak Emerging Equity. So this helps you to understand that what should we expect if we are expecting between the two ranges of the returns. As it is daily calculated, the frequencies are also daily and you can understand more data points. You can see all the data points which I run in through are daily calculated. And any data point which you stop there, 7 June 2019, reflects the sum of the previous 260 days or a 520 days 
daily return sets. So 520 is chosen here. And let's say we uh, choose another scenario, right? 780. So 780 is a three-year period. Now, when you run this 780 uh, period, this is a three year three year period and you can see surprisingly some of the fund has uh, actually now have more than you know 99% positive percentage so now you can see that 100% of the time access mid cap was positive and the lowest return set that was generated for a 780 days period from 2014 was 4.59% now this helps us to understand what was the lowest return sets what was the positive percentage if we change the rolling window as well now, according to the rolling window, the distribution also changes and you can see the range of the distribution as to where the funds are actually backtesting. For an example, if we are talking about this range, 7% to 16% annualized for 780, you can easily see that it is uh, highest return sets are generated by Axis, followed by uh, Nippon India and then followed by another fund of just PGM India Midcap, right? So. You can see these return sets uh, easily based on uh, you know what you add into the system. And yeah. as previously, what I've done is uh, I, I was showing uh, you all how you can actually uh, add an index. You can even add an index and compare it with multiple set of a fund. So let's say we are adding an index again, Nifty mid cap 100. So now we can compare it on the basis of rolling analysis, how a couple of funds on a 780 days rolling basis are actually beating the benchmark or not. So on an average rolling analysis, you can see that a couple of funds are actually beating it, you know, majority of them, but a couple of not. So you can see that Mojilal Oswal Sundaram SBI are not beating on a basis of average. And you can easily see the lowest range as well for, for a 780 period, which is which will help you to understand the risk of any particular set of a mutual fund. Now we have two more statistics here. So we are going to talk about uh, these two st statistics on a different perspective. So let's say, uh, you know, we, we have actually done this point to point and the simple returns. So I'll just narrate this. What is the difference between this point to point and simple return is the compounding effect. A simple return is the sum of the previous 780 days, 260 days, or even a 520 days uh, daily return sets. Whereas a point to point considers the first and the last date of that particular ruling window, right? Now, what you can do is you can change this statistic from different perspective on the risk basis. So let's say we go towards volatility. So volatility, what we consider is the standard deviation. And uh, we will just default this up for 260. And 260 as a one year period, we are now running the ruling analysis for the standard deviation of every single fund from the start date of 2014, 20, 24th February. Now you see how the standard deviation of each fund is actually changing how the time frames are changed. So for an example, in 2015, 2016, you can see the standard deviation uh, shot up high. Again, there was a sh shoot up in the standard deviation of all the funds, including the index in 2020, which was a COVID period. Now, what is the average of all this? So any data point you choose, is a standard deviation of the previous 260 days. Now, what you do is when you average these all data points, you will get a standard deviation, average standard deviation of all the, all the funds and indices. So for an example, when you see the highest average is actually by Nifty Midcap 100. On, an, on a, a brief basis, you can see the lowest average by Axis Midcap Franklin India Prima. Now here you can also see the volatility. Now, this volatility is actually the volatility of the volatility. It's a second level standard deviation to understand that how, how you know, volatile our standard deviation is shooting up on the basis of average. So you can actually see, you know, which are the funds which are consistently backtesting that average data sets and which are not. And then we have these data points, which is high and low and the range. The main points for the standard deviation of ruling volatility and analysis are the average and the volatility. And you can also take a look towards which of the you know uh, mutual fund or an index actually shoot up very high on one single point where you can actually de determine here and very low on one single point. You can determine here as well. And that is how you can take a look towards standard deviation. And then we have a very interesting statistic, which is called as return upon volatility. So we have talked about the return. We have talked about the volatility, but return upon volatility will help us to understand the ratio between the return and the volatility and the standard deviation for a one year period. So what it does is when you see this rolling window of 260, 
it shows us the ratio of these two data points, return and volatility. And what it denotes is that the higher the ratio is, the better it is because we are generating more return based on the volatility. Right. And this average actually denotes all the data points upon return upon volatility, which is given here. Right. So any data points which you see is the previous 260 days return upon volatility. And then you can understand what has been the average because the return upon volatility is not going to be the same. You can see how it is moving around from the last uh, seven to eight years. Sometimes the return upon volatility is actually negative right? Negative 1.44. And sometimes it is giving higher return sets based on the risk. Like for example, PGM mid cap opportunity is giving more return sets based on the risk it holds for the last 260 days. So here you can actually understand what is the average of it. So if I want to take a look towards average, where does the fund stand on the basis of risk? And what is the highest, you know, uh, back tested return upon wall is given by and which funds? You can check that as well and the lowest one as well. So this helps us to understand on a perspective of not just return and not just one volatility parameter. It actually combines these two parameters statistically and runs for uh, multiple sets of days and then shows you a single parameter of average and the volatility. It helps us to understand which fund are actually giving more return sets or more return sets based on the risk. Right. So this is how the rolling analysis is useful for. We have four statistics here. You can actually download any statistic in an Excel format. And all you need to do is just click on it. And the point here is that whatever statistic you choose and whatever methodology you choose, when you generate a PowerPoint report, that uh, statistic will be displayed into the PowerPoint. So you should be aware that whenever you're generating any report, so whenever you're taking a look towards just volatility and run it, and when you uh, when you take a look towards uh, you know downloading this PowerPoint report, it will show those data points on the basis of statistic you have chosen. So I'll just click on this once it's, it gets downloaded. I'll show you how this data points are actually actually being mapped into the PowerPoint report as well, right? So this is how it works out in the rolling analysis. We also have another uh, set of analysis which we would be doing on a portfolio level. So how do we do that uh, rolling analysis on a portfolio level before heading towards that? I will show you the comparisons report tab and here in the comparisons report where you see the PowerPoint, which I'm loading in the last uh, last uh, sheet, which we have, which is the slide here. You can see this is on the basis of volatility, right? So this is now, uh, you know, running the volatility analysis on the basis of uh, the positive percentage, the average volatility high and low. So that's how it works out. And then you can actually, you know, uh, choose to uh, add or, you know, uh, remove any data points you want as it is a proper PowerPoint report, which is generated in our system, right? So this is the rolling return analysis. Now let's go ahead with the portfolio analytics. So for the portfolio analytics, what you can do is it works similarly. Uh, what I've shown you on an individual basis, you can run any portfolios. To add a portfolios, we have some systems like the upload option of ISINS, the statement analyzer, you can actually add through a CDSL, NSDL or a CAMS report and run it. So once you run it, you can see such kind of a portfolio of a prospective client or even an existing client can be loaded in our system. Now, once it is loaded, you can head over to the rolling analysis. So this rolling analysis is on a portfolio level now. It's not on an individual security level. And now here we have three sets of windows where you can actually choose to have. So for an example, this is a one year window, which is 260 given here. This is a two year and this is a three year period. Now you can run this up. You can make this absolute to analyze, to actually compare between the three periods to understand that if the average return sets of this portfolio is increasing or not, right? So you can effectively see that, you know, there's no such change. There's a very minimal change for a one year, two year and a three year period, but effectively it is more than a one year period. So it helps us to understand that should we hold such a portfolio for a longer run? And if, if, if else we hold for such a portfolio on a long, long, longer run, what would be the case? So for an example, when we see this rolling returns, I'm just going to highlight 780 rolling. 780 rolling effectively shows that all the data points which we see is the sum of the previous 780 days daily returns, right? And it is annualized now. So when you see this average, it's an annualized of all the 780 daily returns, right? 
and then you can see the volatility it has decreased from the previous one year return set so if you're holding for a 260 days you would have a risk of negative seven it has happened in the past whereas if you're holding for a three-year period from a particular start date which is given here 2009 then the the low which you see is positive even for a two-year period as well so you can understand that how much should we hold if we hold such a portfolio on 520 or a 780 uh, uh, working days basis then what would happen right and this helps us to understand the historical data sets which is back tested for a particular set of a portfolio and here what you can do is you can also see the ranges for the three periods so whereas you know if i run in for a 780 period i can understand and i can run in a ranges like 10 percent to 25 percent right and then i can uh, you know see if how much is the frequency of this portfolio coming into this return ranges back testing into this return ranges which is 24.06 now you can also screenshot this you can take certain uh, printable charts and the pdf and this svg vector format as well and you can also change the return ranges from here so let's say hypothetically we are consider considering another return range which is a five-year period it's a default period which you can add so here what you can do is you can do it 1300 it's a five-year period when i run this up you will see now the statistic is now changed for 1300. So that's how you can change the statistic for the three windows. And then you can run the rolling re return distribution on a five-year period to understand that what is the highest frequency. So highest frequency of this entire portfolio is between seven to eight percent. So 50% of the entire portfolio lies between seven to eight, right? So this gives us a pretty much of an idea that how it works out when we actually choose one single return ranges, right? And here we also have the rolling volatility analysis, which I've previously discussed for the individual securities. So it applies similarly on a portfolio basis, but it helps us to understand based on all these allocations on a portfolio analytics, how the portfolio is getting affected for a one year, two year and, a, and even a five year period. So this is a five year period, which I have added on a customized basis. So let's say we just click on this and we just remove all this and we just take a look towards 260 rolling volatility analysis. Now for 260 rolling volatility, volatility analysis, you can see there were some jumps in the volatility in some certain sets of the periods. And then there was a sudden jump here for a you know COVID period. So you can effectively understand how the volatility has changed in the last seven to eight years. You can even change the start date to go beyond you know 2011 or 2010, even check out the you know uh, scenario of 2008 financial crisis. And then you can see how the volatility is being changed on an average, right? So these data points are given here. It helps us to understand how the volatility has changed. It helps us to understand what was the highest, uh, you know, volatility uh, for one particular set of a period like 260 and what was the lowest one as well. So it, uh, it gives us an idea that currently what we have on a volatility sense, it's 4.89, right? But on an average, it, sh it is currently 5.90%. So now you can actually see the uh, as the volatility is pretty dynamic and not static. When you see the performance here, you can see the current volatility is 6.28. So is it higher than the original? Yes, it is. Right. So here in a, on a rolling basis, it helps us to understand that on an entire holistic basis, is our volatility um, you know, higher than the average or the lower than the average on a one-year basis? even a two year, even a three year basis, right? So that's how this works out. And uh, that is what uh, the rolling volatility analysis is. Now you can also, uh, you know, printed version of it. Like if you want it to be a, uh, there in the PowerPoint, we have given certain uh, functionalities. So for an example, if I run this PowerPoint report and create a percentage based uh, PowerPoint, it will show all the, you know, whatever I've chosen as a windows, like 260, 520 and 1300 that will be uh, displayed into the PowerPoint report. So I'll just open this PowerPoint. It's a customized report as, uh, as saying, uh, said before, and it helps you to uh, you know take a look towards different sets of parameters, which includes the asset allocation. It includes the performance of the entire portfolio. So I'll just you know uh, show the slideshow here. So it, uh, it is a proper report, which helps you to you know take a look towards all these data sets. Our main point is actually rolling analysis here. So I will just show you the rolling analysis and this is where the rolling analysis is. So whatever I have actually, you know, chosen as a period is printed here itself. And even on the rolling volatility stats. 
So it helps me to uh, uh, take a look. If I want to use this report for my clients, I can use this and I can download it on a PDF format as well. And for a PDF format, we have actually given uh, a seamless PDF report, which will also display uh, the analysis which I've talked about uh, in this session. So this PDF, I'm just showing you around. So this is the PDF uh, which we have. And here we have the rolling returns and the rolling return stats to make a seamless uh, you know, approach if you want to share it with the clients. We also have included drawdowns. So there are lots of parameters here. And this is one parameter which you can use. So that's it for the today's session. Uh, we, uh, we can then head over. I am opening the forum for the Q&A. So if you have any questions, uh, uh, please write it on the chat box or verbally and we will address them. Hello, Umair. This is uh, Raj Shikhar from Bangalore. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, no, this is a question on that the client's uh, portfolio analysis uh, section. Um, and now one beautiful feature uh, Engine has introduced is, uh, you know, linking automatically with RTAs and then getting uh, the download of... Uh, uh, you know, it's an automatic download of the portfolio. All I have to do is to just run the analytics. So it's really very beautiful, very powerful feature. Uh, now, my question is, uh, you know, it is doing by individual investors. Um, now, there are, uh, uh, you know, in many cases, uh, uh, in my case, you know, in a particular family, there are two, three individual plan holders who invest. Uh, but it is actually, be it belongs to one particular family only. So is there any feature that we can combine two, three um, members of this and do a combined analytics? Yes, um, the, the one thing you can do is you can run uh, multiple clients. So uh, if you look at this RTA section, uh, you can click on that load multiple clients uh, button. And let's say, you know, you type something to shorten your list and then you can select um, a few of the clients kind of to make a group. Yeah. You, you could call it something. Um, and as soon as you click on done, all the holdings from that group in the total AM will load and then you can run analytics. Um, however, one thing to remember here is that we cannot save this family information um, to be retrieved later. This has to be done on the fly because every time we refresh your data from RDA, um, uh, Carvey is done once a week and uh, CAMS is done pretty much every day. Um, you know, new information when it's added, we, we discard everything that's old. So we don't keep a history of your data. And plus, um, when we get new information, we don't, uh, you know, it, it's all available as a new set of clients. So if you want to run five or six client portfolios in your RTA section together in one go, this is how you can do it. You just click on that load multiple clients checkbox. And then you can just manually select. Um, and obviously, to make it easy to select, you can actually just filter the name on the top of the surname or something like that. And for example, if you wanted to add someone else to this, you can just uh, so may I just type something else instead of Sharma. Um, right? So you can uh, if, if the surname is yeah. So you can keep adding to this group. And once you're done, you put a name and you hit done. Okay. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Uh, so where I mean I just missed from where should I see this one? I, I so on the it. just on the top of your list. Uh, so maybe just refresh it. So I'll go to back. clients. Okay, first I'll go yeah. to clients. RT connection and just below the filter clients, there's this checkbox saying okay. load multiple clients. Okay, okay, okay. That's it. Oh, okay. All right. So I can write the surname so all the people in that family. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. This is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, thank Perfect. you very much. I, I found this as the most useful <laughs> tool for me. So. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Impressed by this one. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there is a question um, on the chat saying, is it possible to add the entire list from fund screener to compare? So we've had this um, um, you know, suggestion quite a few times. So we finally actually uh, reached um, uh, a good, uh, what, what we hope is a good solution. Um, so could we just go to the fund section uh, quickly and just load the screener?
So um, now sometimes you can have a few hundred funds in here, depending on um, what you've chosen. Uh, but what we can do is we can uh, uh, give you, uh, we, we're basically building a button here, which will show up near toggle top on the left hand side, uh, which will add the top um, 30 or so funds directly compared with one click. And when we say top, it means based on your sort. So since this section is always, um, you know, based on some, uh, some kind of sort, whenever you're looking at this list, it's always sorting by something. Um, what you can do is you can sort it with your specific uh, parameter. And once you've finished sorting, you'll click that button, which will let you add uh, X number of um, funds to your compare section. So this should be coming soon. Um, there is one more question uh, saying, what about fund experts? So yes, so, so uh, we have a few users who are uh, connecting through their fund expert back office, um, uh, back office connection. Um, so uh, unfortunately, fund expert has been having some uh, you know issues with their APIs. So um, from from engine side, we basically um, we uh, call up fund experts APIs every night to sync the data. Um, uh, but what's been happening is the last few days, um, uh, their API has not been responding. We've already been in touch with them and we're waiting for them to respond. I believe that fund expert has had a change in ownership and that is probably the, uh, the cause for the delay, but we are not sure about that, but we are hoping to get a res resolution as soon as we can. Um, from our side, we, we're literally just waiting for them to get the API sorted. Um, so as soon as it's done, it should be back, um, back to sync. Um, there's another question saying uh, HSBC funds after the merger of LNT has been updated. Uh, so yes, that has been done. Um, so we have checked uh, that any HSBC um, funds that are, you know, are, are very short um, in terms of that time period have been updated, uh, re-updated from our data providers. So if you have any issues, do um, you know, do let us know. But they should uh, they should be fully updated. Um, Omer, you can just maybe launch small cap or one of them, I think, um, yeah, any of these. Um, so they have been updated with old data. So the stats as well as the price series will be updated. Any other questions, please um, unmute and ask or just type on the chat. Just another update uh, while we're waiting for any further questions. Um, the statement analyzer that we have, um, uh, it has been working fine as far what we can see from the logs. Um, there are certain cases where people have had um, issues with particular in NSDL files. Um, uh, we sorted one problem out just today morning. Um, so if you do have an issue, please write to support with the file and the password if you can. Um, uh, you know, we, we uh, you need not uh, worry about um, uh, uh, privacy, etc. Of course, I mean, it's your choice, but if you, if you find that you're unable to upload an NSDL, CDSL, or CAMS summary or detail file, please just um, drop us an email to support an engine research. Um, it's just our technical team that will look at it um, and solve the issue. Um, so, uh, yeah, so if you have any issues, please write there. If there are any other questions, please do let us know. Okay, if there's nothing else, Omer, we can go ahead and close up. Sure. Uh, so thank you so much, everyone.
for attending this session. We will come up again next week with an interesting topic. Same time, Friday, 4 o'clock. So stay tuned. And uh, we are having uh, videos being updated of this webinar. So I just got a direct message that uh, will I get a recording of this session? Yes, sir, you will get a recording of this session. Uh, here in the videos tab, you can see the sessions are being recorded and they are being added into our system. So four days ago, the last webinar was actually recorded and added. So you can actually take a look towards all these, uh, you know, uh, videos which we have added. And uh, this is one thing. Another thing is that if you are looking towards uh, the settings tab, we also have the settings tag, which helps you to take a look towards all your details and the colors of the entire platform. So this is it for today. Uh, so thank you so much, everyone, and have a nice weekend ahead.